What's up guys? Joey here for you with Tech. And even in 2021, HMD Global's Nokia smartphones remain the go-to for users who want a stock Android experience and a historically well-known brand. Today we're checking out the Nokia G10, a budget smartphone that was first announced earlier this year. Taking the lid off the box, we're first greeted by the G10 itself. Ours comes in the night colorway, but dusk is also available, which is the purple one shown on the box. Below that, we have the SIM injector tool, paperwork, a clear case, and in separate compartments, the power adapter, USB Type-C cable, and a pair of 3.5mm earphones. The Nokia G10 comes in at a screen size of 6.52 inches. It has respectably slim bezels on the sides, while the chin area is quite thick. The top of the display features a water drop notch that actually isn't that big. It contains the speakerphone and an 8 megapixel selfie camera. The panel itself is a run of the mill IPS LCD that you'd see in almost any entry level phone. Accordingly, it has a resolution of 1600 by 720. It's the sort of display that won't wow you with quality and extra features, but is more than enough to get the job done for most tasks you'd be doing on a daily basis. Moving to the back of the G10, we get a plastic panel with a nice textured finish that feels nice to the touch. The dark blue is also accented by a glittery effect that shows specks of green and blue, and I think that looks quite nice. The back panel is only populated by a circular triple rear camera module on the upper center and the Nokia logo smack in the middle. The rear camera module contains a 13 megapixel main sensor, 2 megapixel macro lens, 2 megapixel depth sensor, and the LED flash. Now, moving our attention to the left side, here we have the slot for the triple card tray that can accommodate two nano sized SIM cards and a micro SD card. It's beside the G10's dedicated Google Assistant button, which has become a staple now for modern Nokia smartphones. On the right side, we have the volume rocker and power button that also doubles as the fingerprint scanner. The scanner initially had a hard time accurately detecting presses as we were setting it up. Up top, we get a noise-canceling microphone and the 3.5mm headphone port. At the bottom, the main microphone, USB Type-C port, and downward-firing loudspeaker. Overall, the Nokia G10 looks and feels quite nice by entry-level or budget standards. While its design language feels like a mishmash of previous smartphone design trends, it's still unique in its own sense. It's comfortable to hold to a certain degree, but is quite thick given its large battery, and the buttons maybe could have been placed a little bit lower on the frame to make it easier for users with small hands to reach. But now, moving on to the internals. The Nokia G10 is powered by a MediaTek Helio G25 chipset with a PowerVR GE8320 GPU, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of internal storage. This setup nowadays is about as spartan as you can get and will suffice for tasks with low performance demands such as web browsing and social media apps. However, given the lack of performance firepower, even basic system UI navigation slugs a little bit. You can get used to it, but you can't really call it snappy either. This is then powered by a 5050mAh battery, which is probably one of this phone's biggest selling points. This is where the low-end chipset and 720p display become an advantage, as this allows battery life to be stretched even further. And like I mentioned earlier, since this is HMD Global's Nokia, the G10 provides a stock Android 11 and can easily be the biggest selling point since there still is a faction of users out there who enjoy stock Android but don't necessarily want to go the Pixel route. But that's about all we have to say for this hands-on and first impressions of the Nokia G10. If you guys want to see more of this phone, let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been Joey, and I'll see you guys in the next one.